Welcome back everybody. I've got a fun new product for you inside ZBrush 2021. Uh, today we are going to make some 3D printed puzzles. And I've got some templates to make it super quick and easy for you to just make it, slice it, print it. You know, this would be great for gifts or to trade shows or whatever, or just for your own personal fun, if you like puzzles, hey, this is great. So we're gonna, first we're gonna go over just a quick installation. So you can find all this on QBrush or Gumroad, okay? Now I did throw like a $1 price on there, sorry. But this way I can um, support it a little bit longer. And also I'm not restricted by limitations on those platforms that I can only put like 25 megabytes on there each time so if i add a buck to it this way hey you support me we support gumroad everybody's happy so that's what i did so let's go ahead and just do a quick install and if you uh, download the zip file and go over to let's see let me find my right folder here uh just take it into your startup in your pixel logic zbrush 2021 or 2022 just depends on when you see this video and get it uh, as long as you put it into the startup and then into your macros and then just drop z puzzle the whole folder in there it's got all the files you need so it just needs to be dropped right in here and everything should work so let's jump into zbrush and i'm going to show you how this thing works so here we are in zbrush now everything you need should be in your macro folder. If you had ZBrush open while you were uh, installing it, uh, just go into your macros which live up here. But my UI, I've got it over here. Make it easier. I'm going to close some of these other ones here. Okay. So if you just if you had it open while you're installing it, just hit reload all macros and boom, it's ready to go. You should see Z puzzle and three associated folders with it and you can open and close each one so let's start with our tolerance print files that we need to work with okay so go to tolerance print just click it and you can actually you don't even have to load it up in here you can actually just drop it into your slicer and start working with it and let me explain this file to you okay basically um this gives us a tolerance uh, gauge of your printer. So it's critical that we keep everything uh, set perfectly. I've, I designed this from the ground up thinking about FDM printers, which a lot of us have. And it could work with resin. Um, you would have to do a slightly different process on rotating them, hollowing them out. So I'm just going to go over the FDM process. Uh, that's, the, that's what I was thinking about when I created this. So... This particular file is uh, 180 millimeters by, I can't think of how tall it is. Let me just pull it up under Scale Master and Subtool Size, and it's 30 millimeters in the Y and only about six millimeters thick. So we want to be able to print this off real fast. And so the idea behind this file is to judge how accurate your printer is, okay? Because the idea is just print this off and pop it off the build plate and it's done. Okay, so each one of these corresponding numbers r refers to 0.1 millimeters. So this particular curve is 0 0.1, this curve is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and so on. And it goes all the way up to uh, 0.9 millimeters. I mean, if, if you got to go that thick, uh, you got serious problems with your printer. I'm just saying. So, and that's what this file is all about. And then we also got another uh, another f uh, test file that you might want to use. Okay, so it's called the Puzzle Tolerance Test. Okay, so this one is actually a 200 millimeter test file. And if we open up our subtools, you can see we've got some cutters in here. Okay. Let me solo it out so you can see what it is. And it's basically like a cookie cutter. This takes advantage of the thickness modifier in the dynamic subdivision. 
So all we have to do is just adjust that uh, um, the width of it to get our specific tolerance. Okay, and all these files are set up perfectly for the macros. So let's go back down to the macro here, and we can go to puzzle cut width. And if you remember those um, uh, numbers that were associated with, we can just set it. So say like it it worked really well on number four, so we set this to number four. Or it only really worked well on eight, so let's go with eight. And it thickens up the pieces, or it thickens up the cuts into the pieces. All right. So now we can take this file. Let's turn off solo, and we could. Uh, go ahead and do boolean with subdivision and let it go through this process and boom it's done uh, everything should be fine it's uh, actually oh here we go I was gonna say that was pretty low no it's like 2.63 million so I would definitely decimate it down pre-process All right, we're done pre-processing processing it there. And usually I just tap it down to 20% and decimate current. And then export out as a OBJ. And it always wants to put it into the Z-plug data. I hope they fix that in 2022. And I'll just call this demo test. demo test there we go so we're going to take it over into our slicer and I like using the Prusa slicer it does it does a really good job and I've been pretty happy with it so let's open up Prusa and let's go find our file yeah remind me tomorrow and boop boop and demo puzzle and And then just drop it right in there. Give it a second to percolate. There it goes. You could always um, uh, change it into STL. It might read it a little bit easier. But we're just going to go with OBJs because it's happy with it. So we got that on our platform ready to go. Wanted to show you some of the settings I use. So go ahead and let me... Do print settings. Uh, with these test prints, I like to just use 0.3 uh, layer height because it prints it off faster. Uh, usually I'll run with a skirt, run around it about three times just to make sure that that um, print head is primed and ready to go. And you can uh, change your infill and all that other stuff. The only other critical one that I wanted to show you. Uh, we don't do any support material. That's the idea behind this whole thing, to get away from support material. We don't want any support material. So the only other thing I do is under the Advanced tab and Slicing, do this Elephant Foot Compensation. And what that does is it'll suck in that first layer just a little bit. So this way, as gravity pushes down on everything, it won't spread out that bottom layer and ruin our tolerance. Okay, it's worked out pretty well. So... We'll go up to the platter here, and we're going to go ahead and just slice it. Uh, from experience, I know it's probably about five and a half hours for this particular guy. Uh, the first uh, test that you need to do probably only take about an hour and a half. So it's better to know all this information before you go on to design something and then try to print off a 14-hour print and find out, hey, it's not working. So... Doing these two files will help you out. So we're going to let that continue slicing. Then we're going to come back and take a look as, and show you the different layers and stuff like that. And then I'll show you some photos. And then we'll go back to the fun stuff, okay? All right. It's all done processing. And we are good to go. So right now it shows about five hours, four minutes. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty accurate for uh, my printer. It might be off by like 15, 20 minutes usually. But that's pretty good. It's better than uh, Cura. Kira just could not get the times right. I don't know what happened, what what goes on there. I've, I've pretty much had it with Kira. So I am going to bring this down. 
So you can kind of see that see that first layer what's going on down there. So let's get it all the way down. Okay. We'll zoom in a little bit. Now you notice how it's kind of sucked in a little bit. So let's just go up one. Yeah, it sucked it in 0.3 millimeters. And these first couple layers, you're going to know right away if your uh, printer is uh, tuned right. Okay. And like I said, that is critical. If you don't have that tuned correctly, uh, it's it's not going to work for you. You got to make sure you, your bed's leveled and that first layer adhesion is really really good but you don't want it squished down too much that it's ruin, ruining your tolerance okay so it's it's a bit of a give and take there i am not a master at 3d printing far from it um but i i know enough to keep me out of trouble so let me show you a couple photos real quick okay so here's my uh tolerance test as you can see up top here this is the first one you always want to do this one gives you a good idea of what's going on okay and this is how it is on the bed i haven't popped it up or not uh, or anything okay you can see the big wide gap way over here and you can see how like number one and two and part of three have kind of fused together okay so as you can so as you can kindly as you can pretty much tell once i went to four it snapped apart just fine so of course, I didn't find out until I did a full bed like this. My bed's about 240, 245, I think. And these, this uh, big print here is uh, 200 millimeters, okay? I just kind of went with the default 200 millimeters, but I'll show you how to adjust that if you need to. But um, you can see how, it, like I said, it broke apart really good. But when I did it on here, when I did a large test file like this, uh, I was running into um, my initial layer height was too low so I had to fix my layer offset there and then I ended up uh, I said well let me just go with a 0.5 fix my settings fix my uh, Z offset and there it is it worked it worked after you know five plus hours there it printed this off and all the pieces just snapped right right apart and it was perfect so obviously you know it's going to differ between printers and that's why I designed these files for you guys to test it with but once you got all your settings nailed down you could just repeat this process over and over and over so let's jump back to ZBrush and let's take a look at our other macros here okay so I've showed you how to start this and make it work so right now I've got four startup files in here okay I've got circle Pi, which is the type of cut. You know, it, it looked like a pizza pie when I did it. So I was like, oh, circle pie. Okay, that works. So I've also got a circle spiral, which put a little spin on that particular uh, theme there. And I got a, a cross. And then I've got a plus symbol. Okay, and you can start off with this. Uh, you can remove that logo in there and add your own stuff to it. And the big reason I wanted to get this out now is because ZBrush is fixing to have a very cool feature, if you haven't seen it, um, a ball relief uh, setup to where you can make take any of your models and make a ball relief, which basically this is right here. Uh, it's not quite a ball relief, but it's close. But it, that's the impression it is, and there's like no overhang, so this will print out just fine. And that's why I thought, hey, man, I got to get this out. So when 2022 comes out, which probably going to be in the next month, uh, you're going to be able to just drag and drop ball reliefs onto the surface and then cut it out and make it your own. You know, it's pretty cool. So, um, on default all of these files here are 200 millimeters okay so if i go back up to the sub tools and i pick that startup and i do let's find scale master all right uh slider to sub tool size as you can see it's 200 by 200. so this will fit on a 200 by 200 bed perfectly okay and the the cut in there i defaulted to um four uh, 0.4 millimeters uh, depending on your printer and that that's what all the test files are for all you got to do is just go to the cutter and run the cut width 
and say like, oh, well, I, I could do it at two. And boom, it does it at two. It sets it to two. And it's ready to go. Stupid quick, stupid easy. And then all you got to do is just uh, do the same process like I did earlier. And we go up and boom, Boolean with subdivision. And it'll print you off one there. And click that one down there. We'll solo it. As you can see, it cut it up nice and neat. If you're not sure, you could just do quick, uh, was it polygroups, auto groups. There you go. Let's turn off the lines. And there you go. There's all your pieces there. And just kind of watch out when you're changing the thickness. Sometimes uh, there might be a little residue on the outer edge that you'll just have to get rid of. Just a couple of little stray pieces there. But yeah, like I said, it's pretty quick and easy here. And then that was that was what I was trying to do. So let's load. Let's find. Uh, let's do do the cross because I haven't processed that one yet. So, so like I said, the ball reliefs are going to be kind of handy. So I'll kind of show you a quick, quick work around at the moment here. So let's go ahead, load up our, load up just a character real quick. Demo head, okay. Comma. Let's go ahead and divide them up a little more. Okay, delete lower. I'll just show you kind of a quick and dirty ball relief that everyone's been doing. We're going to go ahead and do close holes there. Oh, and you see me using my uh, UI here that is available on Gumroad for free. So go ahead and grab it and make your life a little bit easier. I like to use it. It's just quick and easy for me. I've had it set here forever. So it's just so much easier. So let's go ahead and do control shift, select, click on here. The new knife curve. I love this tool. And I'm making it even better in the next version. Can't wait. Boom. All right. We'll cut that off there and go to your alpha. Alpha from mesh. We're going to crank up that res. Okay. And to mesh. All right. Now we got a new one here. Uh, he's without eyes. He's kind of scary. But hey, it's Halloween, so it works. Or almost Halloween. And go ahead and do a masking. And let's do just border. And it puts a little, little uh, mask on the border there. Just do control and then click. Move. What I'm trying to do right now is just to make it solid. Okay. Clear the mask, close the hole. It'll close that back end off eventually. There it goes. Now it's a solid mesh with no underhangs or overhangs. All right. May do quick geometry, Dynamesh, crank it up. You don't have to do all this. I mean, that, that new, like I said, the new ball relief is just going to take all this process out. And it's just going to be flipping wonderful. All right, all done there. Now I could do a quick clay polish here. Just get rid of uh, some of that uh, jaggies there. Uh, boom. All right. So now let's do sub tool copy. Let's go back to the cross. And we can add our our pseudo ball relief to our logo here or our cross. Paste. Alright, put him into the folder. Get him above the cutter. So he gets cut too. See? Now he's gonna get cut. And we'll squish him down. Like I said, this is a pseudo ball relief here. have him looking off the side here bring him back so he's squish him down a little bit more bring him back just a little bit there we go now he's under I know it's kind of weird but let's go ahead and cut him There we go. 
and make sure he's not sticking out the back. On. All right, there we go. And change our preferences. Uh, we'll do five, which is, oops. Make sure I'm on the right one. And dynamic off. Make sure I'm on the cutter. And I'm gonna do five, because that's the way mine's set up. Five. And let's say, oh, I wanna make this whole thing 400 millimeters, okay? Subtool. So if we wanted to make them larger pieces, we could do that. So I almost forgot to show you that. So make sure you get on the startup file because that's the big file that you want to make sure is the right size. And we're going to set the size again. Find our biggest one here. 400. Make sure it's ratios on and resize subtools so this way they all slide over. And when you do that, no need to worry. Those Z cutters are still the same thickness. They're still the 0.5, okay? Or whatever we had set it to. And that's the cool thing. So now, okay, so it's 400, not a big deal. So let's go ahead. It doesn't really matter at this point. Boolean was subdivision. Now, you might want to fix that height and bring that uh, the back of this uh, cross out there, or it's going to be a very thick puzzle. Hey, if that's what you want, go for it. But entirely up to you. Sky's the limit. All right, so we got him cut up. Solo him out. He's not that big. Only 1.722. That's not bad. So go ahead, decimate, pre-process. All right, done pre-processing. Well, almost. There it goes. And getting down to 20%. Decimate. 20% seems to work pretty well. Got them down to 344,000 points. That's not bad at all. And we can go ahead and do, 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 do. Take a look at them real quick. Auto group. There you go. Got all your individual pieces ready to go onto your printer now say like um you know it's not going to fit on your bed but you still wanted this big size print well all you got to do is let me get back to select say like okay i want to divide them like this Control shift a this way we get all of them there okay and under split, under here, you just do split hidden. Come down here. Grab all these guys here. Shift A. Split hidden. Come down here. Split hidden. There you go. You can just send these files off, you know, just make sure you name them accordingly. So you, this way you know what's what. And then just send them off to your slicer and then, uh, you know, kind of use the settings that I use there. Uh, over in uh, Prusa, I would probably definitely, thought I had him open, but I guess I closed him. Let's do, do, do. I'll go to ZBrush here. Let's go ahead and let's see what size he is. Uh, I'm just kind of curious. Oh, yeah, that would fit on my printer. So I'm just going to export this piece here just for demo sakes. Okay. There we go. Cool beans. Just send them right over. Follow the, as you can see, now we can do this run and then do another run and so on and so forth until you have all your pieces put together and everything should fit just fine. Let's slice them and see what happens. All right, he's done slicing there. 
and this particular print will take like 12 hours and 39 minutes uh, like I said I probably would have thinned it out you know make it a little thinner there but sake of the tutorial that's fine and what I would do is set up like like from here down I would set it up to do 0 0.3 uh, layer height and then change your uh, in here you can change uh, I haven't ever done it before but you can but you can change it to where it starts at a lower resolute or yeah at a 0 0.2 or 0 0.15 or whatever however low your Z height can go and then start there at the lower resolution so this way you get a little more fidelity off of here off of the important sections which is your top face and your your sculpt on the inside but yeah that's about it guys uh i hope you enjoy this um like i said i'm gonna get some more shapes in there if you got any ideas for more shapes i was like a, like a star crescent moon uh triangle something like that you know if there's some other shapes you want i could do a hexagon just let me know in the comments and uh have fun with it uh let me know your thoughts and opinions and we will see you in the next video, and you guys have an awesome day.